All right, we have a very special guest this week who is going to show us the latest vehicle. For our listeners, can you introduce yourself and what you I'm do? Andrea Baldi. I'm the president and CEO of Automobile Lamborghini America, and I'm uh, happy to have you here in Toronto for the uh, national premiere in Canada of the Urus SE, uh, the newest uh, derivatives of Urus and uh, the latest car presented by Automobile Lamborghini globally just a few weeks ago in uh, China. Yeah, so we have one right here, which is fantastic. Uh, Thank you. You don't mind walking me around this beautiful well, SUV? Uh, first of all, uh, it's, a, it's a car that's been uh, redesigned in many details. Uh, many are immediately recognizable for people that has had a Urus or that they are familiar with the shape of the Urus. Uh, uh, you can see there is a complete different front of the car, uh, designed with different angles uh, and uh, lines. Uh, the car is uh, probably easier to uh, appreciate uh, if you start from this angle and you see how the front is changing with these flaps uh, and then you can immediately spot the new design for the headlamps. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, apart from the new design that here is really emphasized by the, this beautiful new color, yeah, it's, it's a great called, color. Uh, yes, beautiful with all the sparkle. Yeah. Uh, it's called Arancho Egon, and it's new to the brand. Um, again, apart from that, and all these beautiful new rims that are also 23 inches uh, and uh, define the car and gives him a different character, the real secret of the car is inside. So this is going to be um, a very important piece in our strategy for uh, reducing emissions mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, therefore electrifying our products. Uh, this is an hybrid, uh, the first hybrid uh, uh, for an SUV, mm -hmm. the second of Lamborghini after the Revuelto, to the V12 uh, that we have presented uh, uh, and then introduced to market last year. Uh, this is a car that thanks to the electrification will not only reduce uh, the uh, emission by 80%, but oh, wow. will increase performance because you have actually combined the internal combustion engine uh, that is still a, a twin uh, turbo V8 uh, mm -hmm. uh, engine with an electric uh, engine that is uh, uh, delivering an additional uh, 180, 92 uh, CV and therefore the overall uh, maximum power of this car is 800 CV uh, and uh, it's way uh, more than what we had before uh, with uh, the Urus S uh, uh, that is the predecessor. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, impressive. I read that although this is heavier, it will outperform the S, which is quite yeah, a, well, you know, a mechanical feat. Well, yes, uh, in, in a super sport car, what really matters is always the weight to power ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, uh, adding uh, the battery and uh, the electric engine uh, implies that you increase the weight. Uh, but because you increase the power and uh, if, if you improve the weight to pay the power ratio, you have a car that is faster, and this is it is in the zero one hundred or the zero two hundred, uh, and uh, uh, but also in the um, top speed, yeah. uh, now reaching three thousand and ten uh, kilometers per hour, uh, in case you are in a racetrack. Yeah, <laughs> on a racetrack, <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, so um, the 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 part that I like the most uh, of the car. It's going to be the drivability. Unfortunately, I cannot really show it to you today, yeah. uh, but uh, it's not just performance uh, pure in terms of uh, uh, speed or efficiency in terms of uh, uh, reducing emission. It's about uh, the way the car will behave. Because when you have the opportunity to uh, work uh, on, uh, on a car that was already extremely funny to drive, you want to do better. And uh, the opportunity came from uh, adding an electric engine uh, that obviously is more tunable and offers more opportunity in terms of uh, the way you want to deliver the torque. Uh, combining, of course, with an internal combustion engine, uh, we have integrated the electric engine into the gearbox, okay. uh, the uh, eight gears um, uh, gearbox. And we have added uh, an angle on uh, in between the two axle that delivers a uh, torque vectoring uh, uh, opportunity. We can tune uh, the torque that is delivered in the front and then the rear axle. On top of this, there is a, a differential on the rear that also help to deliver a, a lateral torque vectoring. And, and when you uh, get into the, the um, tuning of all these systems, uh, you mm -hmm. can really get the experience of driving the car uh, funnier and uh, more extreme. You can even 
push it into some oversteering uh, if you want nice. uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, preserve uh, but even expand the character the sporty uh, character of uh, uh, this car that was already uh, clearly a Lamborghini uh, but this is uh, uh, even better so this, the most yeah. The yeah. nicest, the fastest, but also the, dry, the, the, the funnier to drive. It's, it's great you talk about that because there's actually leads me into a, a couple of quick questions. Just first about the, how you say it could oversteer. I assume there's different drive modes that let you do different. We have yeah. six three different driving modes uh, uh, that are, uh, you know, available depending on the surface you are or how performant you want to be. Uh, there is also um, uh, another lever into the tamburo that is the, the, the device inside the car where you change the six driving modes that has itself uh, another few possibilities. It could also drive in fu uh, fully electric. Oh. Uh, we call that way Citta. Oh, Citta stands <laughs> for city and uh, it's, uh, it's also on a button as you have on the steering wheel because uh, you may want to to switch into electric uh, when you don't want to be noisy or you don't just want to uh, don't want to wake up your neighbor yeah. whatever is the reason or you are in the center of, of the Berlin I think it's the only city in the world where you cannot have an internal combustion engine oh, on, right, uh, for right. whatever reason and it goes about uh, 130 kilometers up maybe? to 130 kilometers uh, uh, per hour then will it will uh, automatically yes, yeah. turn on the internal combustion engine because uh, to go faster um, it's a plug-in hybrid, but you barely gonna have any chance in your life to charge it uh, because uh, again, uh, the internal combustion engine will intervene uh, uh, to charge the battery if you need to do so, or you can even select uh, one of the driving mode uh, to make sure that the charger is faster and more uh, efficient. Uh, uh, but in that case, of course, you lose some power, so you, you need to decide yeah. on purpose if you want to uh, charge it, but. The plug in door is there eventually uh, in case you want to charge it. But again, I don't think anybody ever will have to. Um, yeah, so you can, on the highway, you could just recharge while you're oh just yeah. cruising down it, the road. It's, and, uh, yeah. The internal combustion engine will do the charge. And um, we have a different uh, um, interior in certain details, uh, especially most important is a bigger HMI. Okay. We felt there was the. the the possibility to make it a little bigger and uh, we like that it's very slick and long and uh, you have three screens uh, uh, and, and makes the experience inside also look serious and uh, absolutely aligned to what our customer need. This is a everyday car. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, like a two-seater where you would expect to use uh, more for special occasions or in the weekend. Uh, this is a car that you use every day and you want the highest comfort uh, when comfort is needed, mm -hmm. versatility when is needed, power and performance if you want to go to a racetrack or, or if you want to go very fast, uh, then this is a car that let you forget that there are five seats and yeah. you feel like you are in a two-seater. And uh, that that's the secret of Urus, I think, is above all this. Uh, the secret uh, it's that you have a car in a particular uh, segment where Urus is kind of alone in terms of performance, uh, uh, drivability, uh, exclusivity, and uh, make us very proud, but also happy, because obviously um, uh, help us to, to make sure that there is always more demand and supply on Urus. Yeah, so um, Lamborghinis are incredibly fast. They always have been, but it's more than that, the experience, the sound, the look, the feel, as you get deeper into plug-in hybrid and electric, mm. is it going to be hard to tackle some of those issues or or will it just sort of transition naturally? I think the best example is the transition from uh, pure internal combustion engine to uh, hybridization uh, like it is happening now. Uh, there, was some, there was some skepticism mm -hmm. uh, from uh, our customers. Not that they are not concerned about sustainability, but they are also concerned about uh, uh, the passion uh, they have uh, for internal combustion engines. And, and therefore, uh, some of them was waiting to understand what was going to be really the outcome of our application of uh, electrification to uh, Lamborghini. How did we uh, plan to maintain the DNA of the car 
and the brand in a car that was becoming electric. And, and the evidence is uh, here, you know, that you get a faster car uh, that is more performant, uh, is efficient, uh, which is at the end of the day also concerned, but is a super sport car, mm -hmm. noise is there, <laughs> yeah. uh, engine is there, uh, it's just extremely more efficient uh, and faster and, uh, and also has possibility that previous car couldn't have. So hybridization is an answer that like, if you look at motorsport uh, has become evident to everybody is mm -hmm. not affecting uh, 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 super sport cars, uh, but is actually improving the experience in every sense. And uh, I don't have to mention um, uh, necessarily the most famous uh, racing uh, uh, formula that exists in this world. Uh, yeah. But I can go simply on the endurance. Uh, hybrid cars, mm -hmm. uh, since their introduction, have led uh, so many ma car manufacturers to get back or get in for the first time, like in our case, into that formula, the, the WEC or the IMSA, uh, for a simple reason that it's very attractive uh, to uh, for people uh, that is uh, passionate about uh, sport cars. Okay, and just one last question then. So when you designed the hybrid system for this vehicle, it mm. sounds like you we're taking sort of the racing um, application mentality of it could be for efficiency, but it could also be for performance. Was that like important to try to get both into the vehicle? Absolutely. Uh, if you tell me what was the priority of Lamborghini when I was a child, probably was uh, the performance only. Mm -hmm. uh, today, definitely performance and efficiency are uh, weighted with the same uh, uh, relevance. Uh, uh, because they exactly multiply uh, each other and then therefore it, they are not one in, their, in one direction, one in the other. They can be aligned in the same direction. So it works very well uh, for us and uh, motorsport in general. Yeah, okay. Um, well, you've had great success with this vehicle. I'm Thank sure it's going to expand. Do you know sort of what you think the take rate will be for the SE over the S and the So uh, uh, the, the S, uh, we will stop production. We okay. will discontinue production this year. So next year, uh, we will produce only SE. Okay. And uh, same for Performante. Uh, S and Performante Good. are going to be discontinued this oh, year. Okay. And uh, we are uh, going to have only the SE available for a customer right. next So that's be 100% then. 100%. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you for taking time to show us this beautiful vehicle. And it was a pleasure. Yeah, and hope we talk again soon. Thank you. Thanks.